How has Ukraine been using its new Swedish AWACS? Imagine you're a Russian pilot cruising over western Ukraine, feeling bold. You're confident your stealth tricks are holding up until suddenly your radar warning receiver lights up like a Moscow nightclub on payday. Somewhere hundreds of kilometers away, a Swedish-built Saab 340 with a massive radar bar on its spine just spotted you long before you spotted the clouds. That's what Sweden just gave Ukraine earlier this year, a flying radar fortress called the ASC-890, also known as the Saab 340 AEWNC. Now it doesn't dogfight, it doesn't drop bombs, it just sees everything. And because it's Swedish, you can bet it's efficient, well-built, and probably shipped with complimentary meatballs and a note reading we hope this ruins your invasion schedule, comrades. Hey friends, Wes here, military veteran, defense guy, and the only dude who thinks that IKEA should include counter drone options in the catalog. Today we're talking about Ukraine's airborne ace, the ASC-890, a radar plane that turns a humble commuter aircraft into an all-seeing eye capable of tracking missiles, drones, and fighters across nearly 400 kilometers. Let's see if we can dig up how Ukraine has been using it over the summer. The ASC-890, short for Airborne Surveillance and Control, started life as a Saab 340 regional airliner, the kind that once carried business travelers and crying toddlers. Then Saab ripped out the seats, gutted the cabin, and bolted on a 30-foot Erie radar bar to its spine. Sweden confirmed back in March 2025 that it would send two of these aircraft to Ukraine. Each ASC-890 can see up to 400 kilometers depending on altitude and configuration. That means it can watch nearly all of Belarus or half of the Black Sea from deep inside Ukrainian airspace. Now, I want to be clear here. Ukraine didn't get hand-me-downs. The Erie radar is one of the most capable non-US airborne surveillance systems on the planet. It can track aircraft, detect low-flying drones, even pick up cruise missiles trying to hug terrain. If it flies, if it glides, or if it flaps, Erie sees it. Now, before the ASC-890 arrived, Ukraine's air defense network had serious limitations. It could only see as far as its ground radars. Now, those radars were great, but they were vulnerable to jamming to missiles or just being out of line of sight. Every time Russia launched low-flying caliber or KH-101 cruise missiles or even glide bombs, Ukrainian defenders often saw them only when it was almost too late. So getting radar coverage up in the air, well, that was a changer of the game, if you will. Let's ask Vlad. What scares you, Vlad? What's that? The O. Oh, sob, sob, sob scares him. What's that? The, the Erie Eye radar also scares him. Uh, what's that? Oh, Ukraine. All of Ukraine scares him. All right, let's get rid of this piece of shit. I'm tired of looking at him. Come on. The ACSA-90 gave Ukraine what militaries call persistent airborne radar domain awareness. It climbs high, peers over the curvature of the Earth, and sends a real-time radar picture to command centers, F-16s, and missile batteries. It's like switching from a ground-level maze view to a bird's-eye map. Now, when a Russian Tu-95 bomber launches a cruise missile from a thousand kilometers away, the ACSA-90 can see the launch plume and alert Ukrainian defenses a lot sooner. Now, missile defense is a game of seconds. This aircraft buys time, and time saves lives. So what has Ukraine been doing with their radar? So I think first we can say operational overflights or trial missions. There's unverified but plausible reporting that one of the ACS 890s has already flown in Ukrainian airspace, particularly over the Lviv region. Some Russian Turkish press boards and online forums refer to spotting it in the skies over western Ukraine, labeled as an AWACS platform, not a passenger or reconnaissance plane. Now, these flights are likely test or calibration missions, validating radar coverage, mapping interference, testing integration with Ukrainian ground systems, and gaining crew experience. Then there's the integration into air defense and command networks. The primary value of an airborne radar is to act as a node in the command and control network, detect threats early, cue interceptors, deconflict radar sectors, and manage engagements. Sweden's statements emphasize that the ACS-890's 
complement and reinforce the F-16s that Ukraine has along with their existing air defense systems. For example, Swedish officials say the radar plane will help identify incoming cruise missiles, drones, and air targets, and then pass that information to ground-based air defense systems and fighter jets. The hope is that they'll bolster situational awareness over contested Ukrainian airspace, where Russia routinely disables ground radar or saturates the spectrum. The ASC-890 contributed to Ukraine's first F-16 shootdown of a Russian Su-35. Some open sources claim the Saab AWACS played a role in vectoring or giving the radar picture that enabled the interception. I believe that claim is plausible, though it's not yet independently confirmed by some military sources in the public. If validated, it would be the kind of proof of concept moment that justifies the investment. Then there is training and crew development in Sweden. Because operating in AWACS is a complex mission, Ukrainian Air Force personnel are being trained in Sweden on avionics, radar operations, mission planning, and integration with Ukrainian air defense systems. That suggests Ukraine is preparing the ground so that once both aircraft are fully operational, they can rapidly enter regular operations. Now, running in AWACS is not like flying a normal plane. It's a 24-7 airborne chess match. But it's not just the pilots, it's the mission specialists the radar techs, the comms engineers, the data analysts. Each flight crew is effectively a mini air force. The learning curve is kind of steep. The AWACS must maintain radar sweeps, manage hundreds of contacts, coordinate with command centers, and avoid becoming a missile magnet. It's a difference between flying an aircraft and orchestrating a symphony of chaos. Now, this training builds an entirely new doctrine. Ukraine's air force is evolving from reactive defense to proactive control. Before, they scrambled jets to intercept what they could see. Now they can manage the entire air picture, queuing interceptors, deconflicting sectors, coordinating defenses across multiple fronts. And it's the kind of transformation that NATO air forces spent decades building. Ukraine is doing it in under three years. Of course, the ASC-890 is not invincible. For one, the plane is large, ish, it's unstealthy, and it's glowing like a lighthouse on radar. Russia's long-range missiles and interceptors can theoretically reach it, so Ukraine will likely keep it far to the west, well behind friendly lines. Its radar can see into enemy airspace without ever crossing the border, which is clever, but it also means data links must stay secure across hundreds of kilometers. Integration is another challenge. Ukraine's network is a Frankenstein's blend of Soviet-era systems and Western tech feeding Swedish radar data into that soup without latency or data loss takes a uh, serious engineering magic. And then there's Russia's favorite hobby, jamming. The Kremlin invests heavily in electronic warfare. In fact, it's the one thing their military is not horrible at, trying to blind radars and scramble data links. The Erie Eye radar is built to counter that. It can frequency hop, it can switch modes, and it can filter interference dynamically. But prolonged jamming campaigns will still test its limits. Finally, maintenance. These aren't pickup trucks, they're flying supercomputers. Each needs precise calibration, clean power, and software updates. Keeping them mission ready in wartime conditions will strain Ukraine's logistics and its technicians' sleep schedules. Every radar pulse has a cost. Every orbit burns fuel, wears parts, and exposes the aircraft to risk. But even with all those challenges, the payoff dwarfs the problems. If the ASC-890 works as intended, Ukraine doesn't just see the air war, it owns it. Early warning means more intercepts. Shared radar data means better coordination. And the psychological effect on Russian pilots, knowing they're being watched before they even cross the line, is priceless. Airborne early warning turns guesswork into precision. With these Swedish aircraft, Ukraine's air defense net stops being local and becomes national. Each fighter gets a clearer radar picture, each SAM battery wastes fewer missiles, each Russian incursion becomes a calculated risk instead of an easy strike. It's asymmetric warfare, not through numbers, but through knowledge. That's how small air forces beat big ones. Donating tanks is one thing, Donating airborne command centers is another. Sweden's ACS-890 transfer says we see Ukraine as an equal partner in modern warfare. It's also Sweden's way of telling Russia that its days of uncontested airspace are 
over. Each of these radar planes is also a political statement at 25,000 feet, proof that Europe's smaller nations can outthink and out-engineer Moscow's bloated war machine. And when that radar beam sweeps across the sky, you can bet a few Russian pilots are suddenly checking their fuel gauges, wondering if it's time to return to base. As Ukraine integrates the ASC-890 with its F-16s, a new doctrine is emerging. Networked air defense. It's the same principle NATO uses, combining sensors, shooters, and command nodes into a single fluid web of awareness. Ground radars see low, fighters see mid-range, AWACS sees all. When those three layers talk to each other, you get true air superiority, even without stealth bombers or a massive fleet. Ukraine won't just defend, it'll predict, it'll anticipate, and it'll control. And once this system matures, the Russian Air Force will find fewer and fewer places to hide, especially if Ukraine keeps blowing up Russia's AWACS on the ground. I find that hilarious. Okay, thanks for watching, everyone. If you enjoyed this breakdown, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss the next one. And uh, as always, glory to Ukraine, glory to the heroes. Crimea is Ukraine.